Hey Comets, welcome to another day of learning. Um, I told you I was trying to finish up this uh, packet in as few videos as possible. Yesterday I did that little chunk, dogs were barking, had to stop, never got back to it. So here we are on Wednesday and we're going to try and finish up today. All right, so here we go. First off, we've got percentages. Okay, this is where we need to figure out, are we talking about the part, percent, or the whole? All right. And the way we find out is the percent of is a warning sign that tells us that the whole is coming. All right? So anytime you see the words percent of, you know that the whole is the very next thing. All right? If it's a number, we know the whole. If it's not, if it's an unknown thing, we don't know the whole, and that's what we need to find. Now, that only works if um, we use this proportion part over whole equals the percent over 100, okay? All right, so part over whole equals percent over 100. Or you could do, um, let's see, percent times whole equals the part, if you're more of an equation kind of person. Okay, but remember, here this percent needs to be written as a decimal. Okay, sorry, the writing's getting a little bit sloppy up there. Okay, so let's take a look at this first problem. It says 15% of 80, so what do we need to find? Well, percent of says that 80 is our whole. All right, so in this part over whole, I know that 80 is my whole. And then 15% tells me I know the percent. So it's 15 over 100. What I don't know is my part right here. Okay, so the question mark goes right here. Now, how do I get from 80 to 100? Hmm. In this case, this, this uh, scaling up, scaling down may not uh, be the easiest. All right, so Maybe the equation would be a good thing at this point. Okay, maybe. Here's another suggestion. Okay, what if I divide this by five? Okay, and so I get three out of, what would it be, 20? Now I can scale up to 80. So I'm gonna scale up by multiplying by 20, and then three times 20 is 60. Okay. So it'd be 60 out of 80, okay? So what is, going back to the question, what is 15% of 80? What well, would be 60? 60 would be my answer there, all right? What about B? It says nine is 20% of what number? Okay, percent of, whole comes after that. What number? We don't know what the, the whole is, all right? So that's our question mark. So that means 9 must be our part, and then our percent, since it has a percent sign, goes right here. Okay? So we got 9 over something equals 20 over 100. Okay, now how do I get from 9 to 20? Hmm. Could I divide this 20 or by 20 and this 100 by 20? I think so. All right, look at this. 20 divided by 20 is 1. 100 divided by 20 is 5. Now can we scale up? Yeah, absolutely. All right, to scale up from 1 to 9, I multiply by 9. And to scale up, I multiply by 9. 5 times 9 is 45. So my answer there would be 45. So 9 is 20% of 45. Okay? One last one. 8 is what percent of 125? Okay, well, there's that phrase, percent of. That tells me 125 must be my whole, okay? But is this eight my percent? Should I put it over here as over 100? Okay, well, it doesn't have a percent sign, so no, I'm not gonna do that. Eight is my part. If I put eight over 125, what I don't know is my percent. So I need to figure out eight over 125 equals something over 100, okay? Um, what if I divide both by 4? Can I do that? No. What if I divide 8 by 125? What would that look like? 
Let's try it. Okay, I know that may seem a little bit crazy, but let's just see what it brings about. Okay. Oops, not one. So I do eight divided by one twenty-five, and that gives me zero point zero six four, which may not seem very helpful. Except we need to multiply this by a hundred to get to one hundred. One times a hundred would give me a hundred. Whoops, pressed the wrong button. There we go. See that? So to get from one to hundred, I need to multiply by hundred, which means I need to multiply this by 100. So back to the calculator. I have 0 0.064 right here. I need to multiply that by 100 and I get 6.4 is my answer. 6.4 would be my answer there. Okay, it is 6.4 percent. So I want to put 6.4 and then put the percent sign there. Okay, there you go. All right. Next section, moving on. Okay, to avoid overcrowding, a local animal shelter has a monthly goal to find 30% of the dogs' homes. If they started with 80, or with, yeah, 80 dogs this month and reached their monthly goal, how many dogs were found, found homes? Okay, so same idea as what we did before. Okay, you're still finding the part, hole, and the percent. And you need to ask yourself, what do I know? Well, 30% here would tell me that's my percent, right? So I'm going to put 30 over 100. Now what I don't know is, do I have my part or do I have my whole? Okay, well if they started with 80 dogs, does that sound like a part or does that sound like a whole? Okay, I think that sounds like a whole because that's the total dogs they started with. We don't know what part they found homes for and what part they didn't find homes for. Okay, that's the part we're looking for. Okay, but we know that 80 was what they started with 30% they found homes. So we want to find the part that is 30% of 80. All right? So that's how you would get that one started. Okay, do you see the process there? Find the part, find the whole, find the percent. One of those you won't know, and you gotta, you gotta solve for that. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna leave you to that, and then I'm gonna move on to the next section. Okay? Expressions, solving expressions. Now, like we saw when we went through this packet, they put in some negatives. Okay, we're not going to need to worry about those negatives, okay, especially not at this point in the year. Okay, we'll do that next year. So on number one, it says 8x minus 6, and it says to solve for x equals negative 3, negative 1, and 2, okay? And again, guys, I'm just going to cross out the negative 3 for you and the negative 1. All you need to do is solve for the 2. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, I put 2 in for x. So 8, remember 8, or a number next to a variable means to multiply. So I'm going to write this 2 in parentheses, because a number next to parentheses means to multiply. So 8 times 2 minus 6 is basically what I'm coming up with. 8 times 2, 16, minus 6. Now we're just using order of operations, and that would be 10. So my final answer there is 10. Okay, and that's the only one you need to worry about, because the others are negative. Um, let's see, what's another one that doesn't just have negatives? Look at number two. Number two it says 128 minus 9x for x equals negative 2, 0, and 4. Okay, guys, don't you have to worry about the negative 2. All right, but let's try the 0 and let's try the 4. Because I want you to see that you can get different answers, right? Because depending on what x is, the final answer is going to be different. Okay, so 128 minus 9, again, number next to a variable means to multiply. So first we're going to put in 0. So 9 times 0 is 0. 128 minus 0 is 128. So that's one of our answers. The next one, 128, so we're kind of starting over again, minus 9 times 4. Okay, 9 times 4 is 36, 128 minus, oops, 128 minus 36, and I get 92 for an answer. So my first answer is 128, my next answer is 92. Okay, again, every time we change what x is, we're going to get a different outcome, a different final answer. 
All right, now that's that for that page. Let's see if we can make it through the next page before I'm out of my 15 minutes here. Okay, equivalent expressions. All right, apply the distributive property to rewrite an expression, then if possible, combine like terms to simplify. Okay, here we go. Problem A, four, and then in parentheses, x plus five y minus three x. Now remember, distributive property means we're taking what's on the outside we're multiplying everything on the inside of the parentheses times that number. Okay, so I'm going to take 4 times x, which would give me 4x, and I'm going to take 4 times 5y, which would be 20y, and then there is an addition sign in between, so I'm bringing that down. And then this does not get distributed. It's not inside the parentheses, so don't do 4 times 3x. I just bring it down, minus 3x. Then, as the instruction said, I look for like terms. Okay, this has an x, this has a y, this has an x. So these two are like terms, so I combine them. If I have 4x minus 3x, I'm left with 1x, or just x. And then I bring down the 20y. Now, can I add these two and get 21xy? No, they're not like terms. Okay, so that's where we stop. Okay, so the rest, very similar to that. Okay, give them a shot. For each question, use factoring to write an equivalent expression. So here, guys, we're going the opposite direction. All right? So a 17x minus 68. We're trying to figure out what goes into both of those, and we're factoring it out. Now, 17 is a prime number, okay? Um, I'm, I don't know. Will it go into 68? Oh, it does. So I'm going to pull out a 17. And remember, this is where extracting, okay, like the scream extractor on Monsters, Inc. You're pulling that 7 out of the 17x, um, and then the x is what's left over. I think I said that wrong. Pulling the 17 out of the 17x, x is what's left over. And then when we pull 17 out of 68, remember what we got? When we divided it, in other words, 68 divided by 17 gave us 4, okay? So we're undoing this problem. Okay, we could redo the problem by distributing, and we would end up with this answer right here. Okay, but that's how you, that works. Find the thing that you can divide both by, and then uh, pull it out. Okay, uh, let's see, solve each word problem. All right, a frame maker is hired by an art museum to make a special frame for a large rectangular painting. The painting is three times as long as it is tall. The expression two times x plus three x represents the perimeter of the painting, or x represents the length of the short side of the painting. What is the total feet of framing needing if the short side of the painting measures 2.6? Okay, so basically they gave us an expression. Okay. A. And then they're telling us what x equals. Okay where x equals 2.6. So this is a little bit like what we did just up here, right, in this section. Just now we have a different kind of number. All right, so we're going to do 2.6 in for x, and it's going to look like this. 2 times 2.6 plus 3 times 2.6, and then we're going to solve that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is multiplication inside the parentheses. So let's do that. 3, oops, 3 times 2.6 equals 7.8. We're still in parentheses, so I need to do the 2.6. I'm going to add that, plus 2.6. I get 10.4. And then I'm finally going to multiply this 2 times that 10.4. And I get 20.8. Okay, because 2 on the outsides of this parentheses needs to multiply, so I would get 20.8. Now, there's probably a label there. Uh, what was it in? Feet. Okay, so it is 20.8 feet is my final answer. All right, um, I'm almost out of time, so I'm going to stop it there. I'm going to start a new video um, shortly. Um, thank you guys for watching and staying engaged. Bye.